Good day, everyone. Let me begin with thanks to the organizers of this meeting and the QFS community for inviting me uh, to present <clears throat> work with my collaborators, Alexi Shetsov, Wavenim, Prudukorn, Priya Shaman. Uh, my interest in research on chiral superfluids has been influenced <clears throat> greatly by my experimental colleagues, Kibitoshi Kono and Hiroki Ikigami at Riken, and um, Zivak Parpi at Cornell, Bill Halperin at Northwestern, and John Saunders at Royal Holloway. The specific work I report on is drawn from uh, the reports listed here with my collaborators and all of the research that I've been involved in on helium-3 and uh, unconventional superconductors have been supported by the U.S. National Science Foundation. <clears throat> Carol enantiomers are mirror reflected polyatomic molecules, i.e. left or right-handed versions of the molecule. <clears throat> Diatomic molecules, in particular Cooper pairs of helium-3 or electrons, um, can break mirror symmetry and form mirror reflected versions of one another if the two atoms are in motion in their ground state. The wave function shown here uh, corresponds to a Cooper pair with orbital uh, angular momentum nu h bar. The orbital motion also breaks time reversal symmetry, but the product of mirror reflection and time reversal is what I refer to as chiral symmetry. A BCS condensate of Cooper pairs with wave functions of this form are chiral superfluids, i.e a macroscopic quantum state that is either right-handed or left-handed. Such states were first considered by Phil Anderson and Pierre Morel um, well before the discovery of superfluid helium-3. And the case nu equal one is realized as the superfluid phase of helium-3a. Broken time reversal and mirror symmetries uh, can be revealed by anomalous Hall transfer, i.e. Uh, a component of the charger heat current as shown here uh, that's perpendicular to the applied potential or thermal gradient. And secondly, reverse is sign if you measure the same response for left-handed chiral condensate. The Hall conductivity sigma xy and kappa xy are, are allowed by chiral symmetry. The anomalous Hall effect occurs in zero external field. It's the internal motion of the condensate represented here by uh, the chiral axis. And that's essential for understanding the mechanism responsible for anomalous thermal and electric response. Observation of the anomalous Hall or anomalous thermal Hall effect would be a definitive signature of a chiral condensate. Furthermore, theory combined with the experiment can identify the churn number and the broken orbital symmetries of the superconductor. Helium-3A is the only definitively identified chiral superfluid. Uh, it's chiral P-wave with nu equal one. And that was established um, beautifully in the experiments um, done at RECAN, where they measured the anomalous Hall effect of electron bubbles, uh, uh, revealing this remarkable property of superfluid helium-3A. They observed the two key properties shown here in the, in the uh, formula for the average velocity of the ion under the application of the electric field, uh, the transverse uh, motion, uh, deflection of the bubble, and the dependence on the handedness uh, uh, of the condensate in determining the direction of the transverse current. Consider this, the magnitude of the transverse force on a moving ion that was measured by the Riken group corresponds to an effective magnetic field of 10 to the 4 Tesla. Where does that come from? Shetsoff and I developed a kinetic theory for Bogleboff quasi particles scattering off of the moving ion. Uh, the ion reaches a terminal velocity given by the <clears throat> uh, drag mobility and the hull mobility, both of which actually result from the average quasi-particle force on the uh, moving ion resulting from many collisions. The quasi-particle force can be computed uh, from the differential cross-section, scattering cross-section for quasi-particles scattering off the electron bubble. 
And importantly, the latter is addressed by a spectrum of bound chiral fermions. It's the mesoscopic realization of chiral edge states. The angular distribution shown here uh, shows the resonant skew scattering of quasi particles by the spectrum of chiral edge states. Indeed, 11 chiral bound states. The asymmetry in the cross section implies a transverse force uh, on the ion in the negative y direction. And the origin of this skew scattering is connected directly to the topology of helium 3A and the churn number here. Now, in normal helium 3, as an electron bubble moves through the gas and quasi particle excitations, it experiences a headwind from uh, the many from, from the imbalance of collisions in the forward direction, leading to Stokes drag on the electron bubble. In a Fermi liquid, there are two types of quasi particle excitation quasi particles and quasi holes, and they both contribute equally to the Stokes drag. In a BCS a superfluid, additional collision processes occur. A quasi particle and branch convert into a quasi hole, and in the process, add a Cooper pair to the condensate. The reverse process also occurs. A quasi hole branch converts to a quasi particle with the destruction of the Cooper pair. Both are Andreev scattering processes. Now, if the, if the condensate is chiral, multiple branch conversion scattering leads to chiral edge states bound below the bulk excitation gap. And the occupied negative energy subgap states carry unidirectional current, uh, chiral edge current bound to the surface of the electron bubble as indicated here by, by the green uh, current arrows. In particular, the chiral, the bubble becomes left-handed in a right-handed uh, chiral vacuum. The electron bubble uh, acquires angular momentum inherited from the condensate. Uh, <clears throat> as I said, it's left-handed in a right-handed uh, vacuum. And the edge current breaks mirror symmetry. This breaking of mirror symmetry leads to an asymmetry in the scattering amplitude for positive deflections compared to negative deflections of a quasi-particle or a quasi-hole. And this asymmetry in the scattering cross-section is the origin of the skew scattering and the transverse force. The combined drag and Hall force has then determined the average deflection of the electron bubble, and uh, that's parameterized by the Hall angle. This is a comparison of the theoretical results by Shetsoff and myself and the experimental measurements by the RECAN group. The left panel shows the drag mobility over approximately two and a half decades in mobility uh, from temperatures of one millikelvin down to about 250 microkelvin. Remarkable agreement. The right panel shows the Hall ratio over the same temperature of drag. Keep in mind that the inputs to this theory are TC, which is about a millikelvin. And uh, <clears throat> the model of the electron bubble is a hard sphere, which can be justified uh, quantitatively. <clears throat> and the normal state mobility, which determines the ionic radius to be 11.17 Fermi wavelengths. The magnitude of the uh, Hall mobility uh, here at the peak corresponds to the effective field that I mentioned earlier of about 10 to the 4 Tesla. So these results, in my view, uh, confirm ambiguously that the A phase is a topological superfluid with chiral symmetry in the liquid one. But what about an electronic super chiral superfluid or helium-3 infused in low-density aerogels? In this case, the impurities are immobile. And so to create the analog of electron impurities moving through a gas of quasi particles, we have to invert the uh, motion. We need to create a temperature gradient to drive the flux of hot quasi particles through the random impurity potential. Quasi particle scattering off this random field then, of course, leads to heat diffusion. And if the medium is chiral, the same mechanism of branch conversion scattering, a chiral edge state formation, and skew scattering is at work around each impurity, generating an anomalous thermal Hall current.
An almost thermal Hall effect uh, actually was discussed much earlier in the context of topological chiral superconductors by Lee and Green in 2000, where they predicted an anomalous thermal Hall effect that was quantized, uh, <clears throat> or at least the Hall conductance divided by KBT was quantized and originated from uh, the edge spectrum. Broken uh, mirror and time reversal symmetries in the topology of the chiral uh, superconducting graph state also predict a bulk and almost thermal Hall effect induced by quasi particle impurity scattering as we discussed. These are results uh, from Wave and Prudicorn and myself showing uh, the, uh, the longitudinal uh, uh, thermal conductivity in the upper panel for both uh, nu equal one and nu equal two, and the insensitivity, insensitivity of, the, of the longitudinal heat conductivity to both uh, the churn number and the, uh, and the uh, radius of the ionic, uh, the radius of the impurities. By contrast, the, uh, the thermal Hall conductivity is sensitive very sensitive to both ionic radius and churn number. And the reason for this is that the bound state spectrum is sensitive to these two properties and thus the <clears throat> controls the magnitude of the transverse force. The last, <clears throat> the last uh, slide I have here shows a comparison between the edge thermal Hall effect and the bulk thermal Hall effect for the case of fully gapped uh, Carl superconductors with nu equal one and nu equal two. So the edge contribution is typically uh, on a two orders of magnitude smaller than the bulk anomalous thermal Hall effect uh, for, <clears throat> for reasonable impurity concentrations. Uh, you can only, uh, the edge contribution is only observable in ultra pure, in the ultra pure limit uh, for, for a topological superconductor. So finally, let me com conclude by highlighting some of the BCS uh, systems where I, which I think are good candidates for uh, broken uh, mirror and time reversal symmetry and, <clears throat> and uh, can be identified with the anomalous thermal Hall effect. The first uh, you've heard a bit about, you've heard, heard about from Priya Sharma, uh, or you can go to her poster in group B. It's on uh, uh, helium-3 and anisotropic uh, silica aerogels. Uh, Theory predicts two distinct chiral phases and uh, a normal thermal Hall effect would be a, a really powerful test of, of, of these predictions. Similarly, in uh, helium-3 confined in 100 nanometer cavities, in this case, the surface scattering uh, plays the role of the uh, impurity scattering. And uh, we predict that there should be an anomalous thermal Hall effect from confined helium-3A as well. Another example, in the, in the context of electronic superconductors that are believed to uh, <clears throat> be chiral, uranium platinum three is predicted uh, to be uh, uh, chiral in this low, low temperature B phase. Uh, there's evidence from that, particularly from small angle neutron scattering and, and, and polar Kerr effect. Uh, the thermal Hall effect would confirm broken PT in this phase uh, if observed. And similarly for other, um, uh, uh, proposed chiral superconductors, particularly strontium ruthenate, and uh, a number of other more recent proposals, this would be an excellent probe to test for broken PT symmetry. With that, thank you very much.